Join me this week and see how I spent my week organizing my polymer clay collection. Hopefully, it will help you to keep your clay organized. start out this week by telling you why I took on this major project this last week. So last weekend I had some Easter miniatures to make and in the process I needed some light green polymer clay. So I grabbed the nearest package of what looked like light green polymer clay, made my project and baked it off. Well, it wasn't light green. It turned out way different. I'll show you that clay and how it bakes up later in this video. So then I started searching for other greens. So now I'm already in a hurry, now I'm running late, and I couldn't find what I needed. It was time for a major reorganization of my clay. You have to remember, I've been doing polymer clay for, oh gosh, 15, 20 years, so I've got a lot of clay. When I first started, what I did was I organized it by brand. So my Fimo was in one box, my Primo was in another, Sculpey 3 was in another, and that used to work. Well, it doesn't work anymore. So, this week, I made baked swatches of every clay I own, I sorted all my clay, and I reorganized it. I can now not only find every color of clay I have, I know what colors I've got, I know what they look like baked up, and I know what I don't have. So let's move to my workroom, move to my table, and I'll show you how I went about doing this major organization. Alright, so here's a notebook. Now I was cleaning out some stuff a couple of weeks ago, and I ran across three notebooks, and they were filled with well, they had some stuff in them, but they had these pages, you know, like baseball cards go into. I bet you're familiar with those. Little cool trading card pages. And I didn't need the stuff that was in there anymore. So I dumped out the stuff that was in there, but I had a bunch of these sheets of, of protectors. So these, I didn't want to throw them away because, you know, I'd spent quite a bit of money collecting all of these over the years for what I used to use them for. And so I just stuck them in one of the notebooks, stuck the notebook off to the side and thought, I'll find a use for it. Then I ran into that clay issue last weekend, where my clay didn't bake up the way I thought it was going to. And I needed to sort my clays out. So I decided to bake swatches. Then the question was, where do I put those swatches? Well, I realized I had all these pages I can very easily bake my swatches on little cards that can then fit into here. So I have a page for translucent. Yeah, I've got a lot of clay. I've got whites. I've got kind of beige colors, browns, black and gray. These are all metallics on this page. The pinks, the reds, the oranges, the yellows. Greens, I got lots of greens. The blues and the purples. So now I have a baked off copy of every clay I own. So if I'm looking for a translucent, for example, I can pull the cards off of this page that have all the white or clear translucents and I can compare what they look like. Same with the whites or the pearls. The white page also has pearls and marbles and things like that. So let me grab out card. I put my extra ones I've baked off, or my extra cards I cut in the pouch in the front. So let me bake, pull that out and I will make up a card for a clay I picked up yesterday because I found I was out of Primo 
white. And I like to keep a variety of each color. So let me get set up. All right, get this. so I have my card. First thing I did on each card, I wrote the brand name and I wrote the color name. And I checked to be sure what each brand called their color, white. Then I wrote number one, number four, and I made another spot. You'll see why in a minute. There's three samples. If you look closely, there are three samples on every card. Now I have some Sculpey Bacon Bond. You could use TLS for this. It doesn't matter. I just happen to have some Bacon Bond on the table. So this is what I've been using. It's a little cheaper and a little thicker than uh, TLS. So it's good for when you're gluing card clay down to things. So I put three spots of that on. Now a note I want to make on clay while I'm here. When you open your clay, don't make the mistake I used to make. I've gotten more careful about this, but be careful when you open the clay. Look to see, okay, the name of Primo's clays are on the top. So I don't want to cut this area of the label. So when I open a Primo package, I open it down here. Let's see if I can get this to open. I've used this blade so much it's getting really dull. Now, it's just going to take a very small amount. I'm not wasting very much clay and quite frankly I used to when I was doing clay I used to bake off swatches on a regular basis so this is something I do once now and then it's done. I'm going to take off a small amount of clay. This is more than I'll need. Now I've got my pasta machine set up right next to my table to my tile. I'll run this through and I cleaned the pasta machine pretty well between colors. All right, that one's been rolled through on setting number one, which on my pasta machine is the thickest setting. There's green clay all over everything for some reason. Okay. Get everything wiped up. I have clay spilt on my tile here somehow. All right, so I'm going to cut just a small piece of this at number one. I'm going to put it on top of the bacon bond. And I'm trying not to push down too hard with my finger on these pieces that are rolled through the pasta machine. Then I'm really working it down, going through the numbers, going through the settings to the fourth setting, number four on my machine. Because one and four are the two settings I use the most on my machine. Four is about as thin as I ever go. There. So, a number four setting. Now that's glued right above the number four. Now I'll take a small piece of this and I'm going to wad it up and I'm going to press it right there at the bottom. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. Like I said, number one is, a, is the thickest setting on my machine. Number four is the thinnest I commonly go when I'm rolling clay in my pasta machine. I occasionally go thinner, but not very often. Clays can look different, rolled to different thicknesses. And especially on the metallics, the difference between rolling it here and using your fingers is quite a bit different. Also, I can see how many fingerprints I get on the clay, how soft it is, how many fingerprints it picks up by wadding it up like that. So I'm going to go bake this off and then I will be back. All right, so this is baked off. I also did a Sculpey 3 white because I picked up both a Sculpey and a Prima white yesterday when I went to town because I didn't have either of those left. Off camera, I also scooted some of my um, pieces around, my cards around, so that they are on the next page. So I made room for these. So now Sculpey 3 White and Prima White are going right here. So I have a Sculpey Pluffy White, which I happen to have. I bought that to play with a while a couple years ago. Fima White, Cernet White, Sculpey 3 White, and Prima White. Now if I need to figure out which one is warmer or cooler, in other words, has more yellow undertones or blue undertones, it's easy to tell. I don't use Sculpey very often, but I keep some on hand simply because it's softer. It'll soften up the really hard clays, and if I need to mix clay with um, TLS, 
it works a little easier. And it also, they have different tones and some of those. You can definitely see a difference in the whites. So that's my notebook. Now, in case you're curious, there's a total of 99 colors now with the addition of those last two of clay in my clay collection. So how do I take care of those? Well, glad you asked. I brought in the box. I have, I have stored my polymer clays in plastic shoe boxes in Ziploc bags for ever since I started and I've never had a reaction. That's not to say that either the clay or the bags could change their formulas in the future and cause a problem. So far in 15 or 20 years I've not had a problem. So I buy sandwich bags. This is just from the dollar store. I keep these with my clay. This box has the whites and the translucent. That's all that's in this box. Each bag has one single uh, color. Now like this bag I had, these are translucent, there's a full block and two partial blocks. That was part of my problem. I had multiple blocks of clay. Let's get that Sculpey into its own bag. Now, I showed you about opening the clay carefully. Storing it carefully is important also. Make sure that you zip these bags shut because I ended up putting a lot of clay into my scrap clay bag because when I got into the bottoms of these containers the way they used to be, I found clay that had fallen out of its bag and either it was A, not marked anymore because the label was floating separate from the clay so I really didn't know for sure what was what or B, it had gotten dirty because it was bouncing around the bottom of a box. So I forget how many boxes I've got. I'll count the boxes and I'll get a, a shot of that on the blog post. But, wrong end. This one's labeled translucent and white. So this will go on my shelf. When I want a white or translucent clay, I'll know to pull this box. When I need a green one, I'll pull the box that says green. Oh, that color that I baked up the other day that did not turn out. Hold on, let me let me pause and go get the block of clay so you can really see the difference. All right, so here's that green clay that I was telling you about that caused the whole, caused me to really get going. Okay, this looks like a really pretty light mint green, doesn't it? Well, I didn't pay attention to what the color was. It's translucent green. This is how this one bakes up. I'm hoping the camera's picking up. Let's see if I can get down closer. That is how much different this clay bakes up from what it looks like in the package. This is why samples are good. This is why swatching is a good idea. Now, what else did I discover in this process? Well, the clay. <laughs> a lot of times when I go to find clay, the way it was before, because it wasn't organized, I would think I was out of a clay and I'd buy more, or open more. And the winner of that prize, if you want to call it that, was female caramel. Go back up. There are eight blocks or partial blocks of female caramel in this bag. I, uh, I think I'll be doing quite a bit with female caramel in the near future because I have a lot of that color. But now I know what I've got. The other thing that happened was I was almost out of scrap clay. I had very little scrap clay left. And as you can see, I have a lot now. I actually weighed this. There's a pound and a half of clay in this bag because I ended up dumping sometimes whole bars or almost whole bars of clay because they were full of gunk from being just loose in the bottom of the container. So that's another really good example of why we need to be careful with our clay. So I hope this has helped you. I hope that you can use this because I know it's going to help me keep my clay sorted. And if you start now, before you get almost 100 colors of clay, uh, it'll be a lot easier. Now, when I bring home a package of clay, I can simply make a card for it. Right away, file it in my notebook, 
and I'll know what it looks like. Also, when I see clay is on sale, I can do a quick look through my boxes and say, oh, I'm low on this color, or I certainly don't want to buy any more caramel. At least not for a while. <laughs> a couple of discoveries I made I'll be pointing out on the blog post. Some of the things that I discovered in this process kind of surprised me. So be sure and check out the blog post and see what some of the uh, discoveries I made about my clay were. In the blog post, I'll also talk about what size I cut those cards, how long I bake the samples for, and that kind of thing. And by the way, I do not have my Kato clay in this, in this batch because my Kato clay bakes at a different temperature, so I'm going to do it completely separate. I will probably make cards for it and put it in the back of the notebook, but I need to get another plastic box for that, and I haven't even opened those yet. And I bought them in about a month ago, so I really need to get to those. So, be sure and check the blog post. Be sure and check us on Facebook. I'm taking a week or two off from the Trash to Treasure video, so we won't have one of those this week, this coming week, probably the following week before I get another one of those. Next week, I'm not sure, I might be showing you a new blending technique that I saw on a video. We'll see. Otherwise, I'll come up with a project for next Sunday. So, have fun with your minis. Get yourself organized before you have as much of a mess as I had. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.